What is up, everybody? The History Guy here, and I am excited to finally be diving into Rule the Waves 2. Uh, just a couple of things up front before we get into this. Number one, I am a total noob at this game. I have been playing, I've been learning, I've been watching other people, uh, folks who are much more skilled at this game than I, and I've been watching some of their playthroughs. I've been trying to learn what I can as well. Uh, just enough to get me up to speed so that I feel like I can at least tackle the basics of this game. So please, if you're looking for an expert to show you exactly what to do, I'm not your guy. There's some great YouTubers out there who do that, but this is more for uh, the folks who have been longtime followers of this channel or have newly discovered it, who have been asking when I was going to play this. So here we go. Uh, as we go along, as with all of my games, I welcome your input, your constructive criticism. Uh, if you have something that will help me to learn how to play this game better and also will help other people who are watching learn how to play this game better, by all means, please use the comment section below and offer your input. I've gotten so much better at so many games because of the viewers. So let's dive in. Let's have some fun in the process. Maybe talk a little history uh, as I learn some of that. I've been trying to study up on this period in history and on the naval warfare at this time. Uh, so I'm going to dive in and I'm going to choose Germany. I feel like from all of your advice and from my own research that that seems like a good nation to choose as a new player who's doing his first kind of long playthrough in the game. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to mess up. I definitely have a lot to learn, especially where it comes to the combat on this game. But we're going to have some fun in the process. So we're going to choose uh, Germany. And let's take a look a little bit at what how things start for Germany in 1900. Obviously, the leader is Kaiser Wilhelm II. Uh, he is a cousin, a first cousin, to King George V of uh, Great Britain. Uh, of course, at this point in history, it's actually Edward VII. Or no, probably still Victoria at this point. Victoria, who is Kaiser Wilhelm's grandmother, is uh, queen in Great Britain. Uh, it'll be very quickly followed by Edward VII and then by George V in 1910. Uh, so uh, we'll kind of talk through more of that dynamic as we go along. But in the meantime, uh, our build area is obviously Northern Europe. Here's the game's naval budget versus the historic naval budget. I believe these are in millions, so that would be $36 million versus $16 million. They're cautious. They're a technology leader, which I like. Uh, a bombastic head of state. Yeah, Kaiser Wilhelm was known for that a little bit. Uh, our dock size, size is 14000 which is a little smaller than some of the other nations, but we'll build that up. Uh, some research advantages. Armor development, subdivision, and damage control, AP projectiles, uh, naval aviation, lighter than air. That'll be down the road. We will get into carrier warfare and all of that. Missile technology, cross-deck fire, bomb and torpedo. Interesting. Uh, we have no 10-inch guns, but we have 9-inch and 11-inch right now. So uh, we're going to dive into Germany. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And uh, Tirpitz, who was historically the guy who kind of led the naval revolution in uh, Germany, but in this case, we are going to be history guy. Uh, we're going to go with a large fleet. Well, you know what? Let's go medium, just because. Uh, yeah, I, I got to I got to manage this uh, as best I can. Uh, we're going to go ahead and build uh, a manual legacy fleet, which means we get to build our our beginning fleet here. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive into this. So first things first, we need to design and build our initial fleet, our legacy fleet that we take into the game. Just for historical reference, uh, obviously this is 1900. In, in 1890, 10 years before this, the German uh, fleet uh, historically was made of 13 battleships. They, those would have been you know, the pre-dreadnought types. Uh, 23 cruisers, 30 what would have been known as uh, TBDs, I guess those are torpedo boats. Uh, and then 15 miscellaneous ships, a very small Navy, mostly coastal defense type thing. By 1914, the year that World War I began, after a massive buildup, this kind of arms race between Germany and the British and building up a Navy. By 1914, 47 battleships in the German Navy, 57 cruisers, 143 destroyers, 91 TBDs, and 45 submarines. So that is kind of my goal by 1914, is to at least be historical, if not a little better than that. And I'm actually going to start by building 
a historic battleship, a uh, pre-dreadnought battleship that the Germans actually had. Uh, this is the uh, Wittelsbach class that I want to build. And I'll talk a little bit about this. We're going to try and make it as close to the real thing as possible. And then from there, I'll just go kind of ahistorical and build whatever I want. But uh, I guess we're going with a pre-dreadnought battleship. Now, just to get it started, I'll hit the auto design. And then from there, I'll make the tweaks to get this a little bit more like the Wittelsbach class. So the Wittelsbach class went 18 knots. Uh, so we're good on that. Uh, it actually had a complement of 680 men. Now, that may not end up exact right now it's at 938 we'll see where it's at once i adjust some things to this uh they had four 9.4 inch guns uh so in this case we're going to go with just four nine inch guns which is what it already has Quality's not good on those hopefully we'll get some research to be able to build that up i don't like having a minus one quality gun and i love with the gun data here it shows you uh, at different ranges what those guns will penetrate uh, so that is kind of our barometer for seeing what kind of weapons we're building and, and how well they'll be able to keep up against what our potential enemies uh, put out there. So um, with that in mind, let's take a look. Uh, it's also got 18 6-inch guns. So we're going to go ahead and drop that down to 6-inch guns. There's 18 of those. I actually would prefer to put those up on top if we're able to do that. I'm not sure... Um, how that's going to work out we'll start by i don't even know if i have the technology to do it that way uh then they also had 12 three and a half inch guns so we'll go with 12 three inch guns in this case uh it had six 18 inch torpedo tubes i don't know if that's it eh, looks like we've got four of them uh, i don't know if we can add additionals or not but if we can uh, i'll certainly do that eh, it looks like probably not so we'll just leave that as is. I guess we'll just go with four. That'll have to do. Uh, now let's look at armor. Belt armor was four inches extended and nine inches, and they're already set to that. Uh, turrets were 10-inch armor, so we'll go ahead and switch over to that. And it had two inches of deck armor, which is where it's at already. So uh, I don't have information on secondaries and things of that nature, so we're just going to leave it right where it is on that. Uh, that's about all the information. Actually, uh, the Wittelsbach class actually ended up at 12,700 tons uh, at that. Uh, with all of that build, obviously we're a little higher than that, but we can come down some. Uh, I'd like to have a little bit of extra weight, although I don't expect I'll probably upgrade these too much. Um, but I'll leave a little bit of extra weight. I don't know how much that'll allow me to upgrade anything, but uh, let's go ahead and type in the class and now we're going to do the check and see what it's going to tell me is wrong do you really want armor the main turrets that heavy yes i do uh, range of fire for secondary guns reduced by 40 percent due to lack of suitable training and elevation gear for secondary turrets all right what happens if we change those uh, to casemate guns how does that affect what okay uh, that actually makes it better. So I guess we'll go with casemate guns. I don't know what the Wittelsbach had if they were casemate guns. I just know they were secondary guns. So yes, we do want it that heavy. And we're going to go ahead and build that. Now, I believe historically there were five of them. Um, I'll just go ahead and let it name whatever the names it comes up with in this case. Uh, it didn't have five in 1900. I think most of those were rolled out um, around 1901, 1902, 1903. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and build five of them. So there you have it. We've got the Wittelsbach, the Weissenberg, the Wetten, the Zaringen, and the Mecklenburg. Uh, so those are 13,600, uh, and that'll be a nice start to my Navy. Obviously, I've got a lot more to build than that. While I'm thinking about it, I just want to let you know that those of you who are patrons, I believe at the five and ten dollar level per month, uh, you do get to choose the name of a ship, which will be your ship in this series that we'll try to keep alive as best we can. Um, so I will be sending out a message to all of you who are patrons uh, to ask you what type of ship you want and uh, what you would like the name to be. As long as it's family friendly, it can be anything you want. It doesn't have to be German. Um, but it'll become part of the Navy. If you want to get on board with that, use the link in the description below. You can check out Patreon and get on board and help support me in that way. All right, let's go ahead and dive back in and start looking at cruisers. 
All right, cruiser time. We're going to go with some armored cruisers. And uh, these are going to be basically not a lot of difference between these and the, the pre-dreadnought battleships. They're going to be almost as heavy. They're going to be a little faster. Um, so I'm just taking a look, and I'm honestly not going to make a lot of changes with my initial fleet. Uh, I'll pretty much go with what it builds. I want to see what it does with the check. Um, it doesn't like the, the guns at this size. I don't know how good the quality is if we go higher or lower. Ship's a little overweight, but otherwise no issues there. Um, let's keep the complement where it is. Let's go a little bit heavier. Now, the game, if I understand this right, depending on what you build, it will reassign the class. So I can't say I want an armored cruiser and then build it like a battleship. It'll redesignate it as a battleship. So... Um, Hopefully, by going up with the displacement to where I did, it's not going to give me an issue with it being a cruiser. It looks like we're all okay there. Um, again, I'll probably just keep it right where it is for now, at least for my legacy fleet, until I can start upping, uh, upgrading, and doing some uh, new things with this. I wonder if I could go a little faster, how much that's going to cost. Oh, big difference in weight, so obviously not going to do that. All right, so we're good there. Victoria Louise. And those are just about as expensive as the, the battleships. So um, I guess we'll just build three of those for now because uh, we don't have much money left. Now let's move on to light cruisers. I don't know what those are going to cost. So 5600 is the displacement on those. Looks like we're going to have 5-inch guns. The quality sucks on those too, unfortunately. Uh, let's check that design. Oh, bad design. We have not developed turrets in this position, so that's not going to work at all. Uh, so we're going to have to make some changes with that. Uh, let's see. We're in the casemate. That's, I guess, uh, where we need to be. What was it that it was saying was wrong? Uh, above water tubes not researched. Uh, you know what? Forget the light cruisers for now. We can build some of those later. Let's build some destroyers. With the money that I've got left. 500 tons. Nice and small. V1 is what it's going with. I don't like that it doesn't have a name. But I guess you're going to have so many different destroyers. That that's understandable that that would be the case. Uh, so I guess we'll just keep that for now. And all the names are going to be probably generic things. So those are 27. Uh, not speed to start. Uh, heavier crowded centerline gun and torpedo mounts. Will affect range of f uh, fire. All right. I don't know exactly what I can do with that. Let me play with that a little bit. All right, so 500 is the biggest displacement I can build for destroyers right now. So I'm going to have cramped uh, complement. We're going to be slightly overweight. I guess I could fix the weight issue by removing a few rounds. Uh, that doesn't look like it's having any kind of an impact. Not at those size rounds. So we're just going to go with it. We're not going to keep these as our top line cruisers for very long and or destroyers for very long anyway we can only build 12 uh, at a time so let's go ahead and throw 12 of them in there uh, we've still got some money to spend so i guess let's see if we can build another victoria louise not even close can we build some more destroyers i guess we can run another set of 12 or 10 there we go so that's going to be our starting fleet. We're going to upgrade that and complement it very quickly, starting with some light cruisers and then some more additional armored cruisers and battleships as we develop new technologies. But I think for now, uh, that is it for my initial fleet. Now, I believe the next phase is that we actually start construction. Yeah, under construction. And uh, the reason we want to do this is that, that they're partially constructed already. So you're on your way to kind of um, having those ones very soon. So we got to look at our monthly balance. Looks like we've got about six million almost in monthly balance, four hundred thousand in the bank. So let's go ahead and build a few light cruisers now. All right. So the Hella class is going to be our light cruiser, and uh, again, we're just going to go with what it already gives me. We've got four caliber guns. Those are at least a quality zero, which is a little better. They have a speed of twenty-four knots, and I think we are good. Uh, so let's go ahead and see how many we can queue up of those without 
burning my budget. Actually, the budget's not too bad on those. The monthly build cost is only going to be $790 for me to build 10 of them. So let's go ahead and build 12 of those. That'll give me at almost 1000 I don't have the funds. Now oh, i got to have funds up front. Okay. I know, I know. Why do you keep telling me that? Okay, so I guess we're just not going to build anything. It didn't allow me to do that because of the funds. So we are in to turn one. It is the year 1900. We need to have 5,000 in tonnage in foreign stations. So we'll go ahead and deal with that right away. Um, let's see how much. These are only 500, so I would have to t send out 10 destroyers to do that. Just a lot easier just to send out a, one of these bad boys, one of my uh, armored cruisers. So let's go ahead and send an armored cruiser to foreign station and we are all set. So looking at the map, and this is some of the stuff I've got to start learning a little better still. Uh, obviously we've got a few colonies for the Germans here and there. There's a few in Africa, uh, a few over in the Pacific uh, that we've got to deal with. And uh, so right here we can see what the British have as far as ships go. They each have an armored cruiser. Uh, in the region, I've got a base capacity of 15, which is way less than France and Britain have. But you know what? Honestly, I don't know that I'm ever going to keep up with France and Britain. Uh, but first things first, I want to look at research. So there's a couple things I want to prioritize right off the bat uh, with research, and that's damage control for one. Um, where is that exactly? I made a list of these things. Uh, so fire control, uh, that's one. So let's go ahead and put that on high. Because uh, some of these things, they don't require you to suddenly have to do new builds with your uh, with your your ships. You already have the it just new technology automatically get, starts to give you upgrades. So um, we're going to start researching naval guns. Uh, and you can see here the quality on some of these guns. So obviously I want that uh, to improve as quickly as possible. Uh, we are gonna go up to 12, which is the max you can go, the percentage of your budget into research. And uh, I've read from other people and also in the instructions for the game that there's a diminishing returns when you go above eight. So uh, yeah, you still get more out of 12 than you do with eight, but it's not as potent as it is for those first eight. But we're still gonna max that out at 12. Uh, what else do we wanna go with here? Uh, AP projectiles, I think that's another uh, kind of an easy thing that we can upgrade. Ship design, same. Beyond that, uh, that's definitely something I would say let me know your thoughts on. Um, I feel like I should probably drop some things to lower. Um, submarines, I'm not going to put a big premium on subs, which I know is ahistorical for the Germans. Uh, same with torpedo technology, at least for now. Um, and light force is same thing. I think I think I'll keep everything else the way it is. Let me know your thoughts. Is there some thing that you have found that is really important to research as Germany that gives a lot of benefit to the game? Uh, as I said a minute ago, my thought process is what can I do that gives me the most bang for my buck where I don't have to constantly upgrade my ships to get the benefit from those advances. I know some of those advances are that's the case. Others, you know, getting bigger guns means you got to build new ships uh, or replace the ones that you already have. And I know that was kind of how things went, that there was that constant arms race thing going on. Oh, you've got 12 inch guns. Well, now I've got to have 13 inch guns. Now we've got to have thicker armor, all that sort of thing. So um, also coastal fortifications are a thing and uh, that's something I'm going to have to think about. So I would love to hear your thoughts. Where should I be putting my fortifications? Where should I prioritize protecting bases and sending ships and things like that? Um, right now, I'm mostly just concerned with building up my fleet uh, then we can worry about that. And then, of course, we have doctrine. There's a lot here that I've still got to study and research and get better at. Main thing I know I want to focus on is going to be priorities in uh, training of some kind. I feel like gunnery is my main desire when it comes to training. If I can train up my crews to be better shots in an age when you know, just a couple of percentage was the best you could hope for as far as your percentage of hits that you made, these were 
you know, ships that were sending massive amounts of shells at each other and very few were actually landing. So the more I can do with that, I think the better off I'll be. So we're going to start training for gunnery. Uh, that's going to take 12 months and that's totally fine. Uh, I'll do auto ammo selection for now until I feel like I'm a little more comfortable with that building forts and bases, um, coastal batteries. I feel like I want to make sure that Germany and East Prussia are protected first and I don't know what size I want to go. How much would an 11 inch coastal battery cost in Germany? Dang, $12, 12 million. So, uh, and then it costs 1200 a month. So I don't think we're going to do that just yet. Uh, I'd rather focus on some ships. So uh, as I mentioned, light cruisers are my main concern at the moment. I have one designed. I just haven't built any yet. Um, so there's the monthly build cost, 3000 just to build two of those bad boys. Uh, so we're going to start with that. And that sets me in the hole as far as funds go. But with my monthly balance still being positive, that should help. I want to save up some money, but I've seen other YouTubers make the mistake of saving too much money. Because, you know, it's always that kind of, do I wait until the next technology before I start building my ship so that I'm not... Uh, spending two years building a battleship that when it comes off the line, it's already obsolete, that kind of thing. Um, so I, I do want to balance saving money for better ships, but also I don't want to get to that place where decisions get made that cost me because I held on to too much money. So um, with that said, I'm, I'm feeling like Russia is a good first uh, person to go to war with because I feel like they wouldn't be that difficult although I don't know how much benefit I get other than prestige from going to war with Russia so we're going to go high intel effort with them uh, I think we'll go low with everybody else I'm going to go none with the U.S. because I'd actually like to try and make an alliance with the U.S. if that's possible maybe we'll go medium with everybody else for now and then I'll adjust depending on what happens don't want to end up at war too early, especially with the British. I don't feel like I can handle that right now. Uh, so then the other thing I guess is do I mothball or kind of demobilize some of my fleets uh, to save some money? I feel like that's probably what I want to do. Uh, so I can't hit control because that's how I stop recording. So I should have chosen a better, a better button for that. Uh, we're going to put these guys in the reserve fleet. And see how uh, that doesn't save a whole lot on those. It's the big the big boys that uh, make the big difference. So we'll just keep these guys activated for now. Uh, let's go ahead and put my other two cruisers in reserve. Put my battleships in reserve just to save that money for now. Obviously, I know that causes a hit uh, to the quality of your crew. But for now, I'd rather have the, the cash. So let's go ahead and hit a turn, see if anything happens. All right, so Italy is building an 8-inch coastal battery in Sardinia. They've laid down a battleship, uh, pre-dreadnought battleship, Regina Margarita class. Russia has ordered one in a British shipyard. Japan has laid down a destroyer and a armored cruiser. All right, so not a lot happening just yet. Now we're in the black again on uh, funds. I'm going to go ahead and start building up my docks. Oh, I can't afford it. I've got to wait one more turn. Fine, fine, fine. New research area discovered. Our scientists expect promising results in the new research area of fleet tactics. All right. U.S. is increasing their naval expenditures. Great Britain's built down. You know what? Let's take a look at um, what everybody else has going on. And I'm trying to remember where you do that. I guess you probably do that here. Um, we can at least look and see what other people have in different places. Uh, so here in Northern Europe, Great Britain's got nine light cruisers and eight destroyers. Uh, I've got, you can see what I've got there. Uh, so that's kind of where things are. I know there's all oh, Intel reports. Here we go. Um, that's just that. There's got to be somewhere that I can see whatever. Here we go. What everybody's got. So there's our naval budget, which is actually second only to Great Britain. I've got more battleships than anybody else in service. So maybe now is the time to go to war before people get those in uh, service themselves. Uh, kind of on average with the uh, armored cruisers. 
Uh, way behind on light cruisers, obviously, so we've got to work on that. And I'm way ahead on destroyers, so I've really got kind of the most powerful navy in the world at the moment. That's obviously going to change fast. Okay, uh, we've got the funds now, I believe, to go ahead and upgrade our dock size. So let's go ahead and do that. That's really all. Uh, let's do it twice, shall we? Oh, I can't do it. i got to let it build what they've already got first. So let's kind of move this over. I want to see this a little better. Uh, you can just see my tonnage in various areas. Uh, i got a ship that's on its way somewhere at the moment, I believe. Um, probably going to want some coastal fortifications, but I'm not sure of what size I want to do that yet. So uh, let's look at our ships under construction. 18 months it's going to take to get those light cruisers. That is a long time to wait. Uh, for ships that other people already have. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a couple more of those things going. Oh, that, that puts me below what I've got available. So, uh, yep, we're going to get a third one going. That's going to take 20 months to get in uh, into service. And then let's go ahead and take a turn. We're going to probably get some decisions coming soon that will affect the game. Uh, here we go. USA is sounding us out. Oh, that's awesome. That's exactly what I was hoping for. I want an alliance with the United States. The Kaiser thinks that this can make it possible, excuse me, to save on defense expenditures. What is your response? Excellent idea. It's exactly what I have, I have in mind. Um, well, that that hurts my budget and it hurts my tension. Um, no. Treaty negotiated with the United States. Excellent. That makes me feel a little bit more comfortable moving forward. Um, so we'll go ahead on low intel with them for now and uh, kind of stick with everything else as is. Uh, private shipbuilding is expanding. Mass dock size increased by a thousand tons. Hey, there's the Matahari. Our top spy has managed to get a hold of the blueprints for the new Russian battleship Evastafi, currently under construction. Let's take a look at this bad boy. So she's got four 12-inch guns, which is way uh, better than what I've got right now because uh, I've got 10-inch guns. Uh, she's got 14 7-inch guns compared to my 18 6-inch guns on my battleship. It's also got two light anti-aircraft guns, which is interesting. I didn't think that would be a concern just yet. She does have thinner uh, belt armor than what I've got on mine because uh, I believe I've got 10. Yeah. Um, no, I've got 9 inch, so it's the same as that. So, all right. So, already they're upping the ante. 17 knots, a little slower than mine, but heavier at 15,000 displacement. So, we've got our work cut out for us. If the Russians are building that, you can bet that the USA and France with their new ones are building that too. So, uh, we're going to do some more research, though, before I design anything new. Uh, U.S. has laid down a uh, armored cruiser. And we've got some new destroyers coming for the Japanese. British 8-inch guns have better performance than ours. Well, thanks a lot for that. So we are saving up some funds, though, very slowly. France is building up a bunch of new ships. Let's take a look real quick and see uh, in the Almanac. I, I think there's a way to do this. Yeah. Uh, so France, let's take a look. They've got one battleship, one that they're building. Uh, they're building up two new armored cruisers and one new coastal battery. Uh, they've got all the way up to 13 inch guns. So that's a big problem for me right now is that I can't build as big a guns as what they have. Um, what's our allies in the U S have, they've got up to 12 inch guns. So everybody's got better guns than me at the moment. We're going to have to do something about that in the f uh, very near future here. Um, we do have that on high priority, so that's good. And it looks like we're well on our way to getting through the first year, which I think is probably going to be enough here. Regional war seems imminent in the Balkans. One of our major arms manufacturers wants to step up exports to the likely belligerents. What is your reaction? All right, so that'll reduce tension. This will build the budget and tension. I feel like this should be okay because all the tension is low enough that that's not going to drive us to war just doing that. Krupp armor. Hey, excellent. Gradual improvement of armor quality. Uh, fire control breakthrough. Coincidence range finder. That's awesome. And also hydraulic recoil. A gradual a national ROF improvement. Range of fire. Uh, so that's good. 
It did drive up tensions a little bit with Russia and with uh, the British, but that isn't too, too bad. We've got a long way to go. So let's go ahead and take this into 1901. Uh, we've got a hardened AP penetrator from France. Okay. The blueprints for the new British ship, the Rodney. Let's take a look at the HMS Rodney. 15,400 tons. She goes 19 knots. She's faster than what I've got. She's got four 13-inch guns, uh, 12 6-inch guns. So I've got more 6-inch by far uh, and 10 3-inch guns. So, But her big guns are better than mine. So that is a problem, obviously. Uh, nine and a half inch belt armor. So that's the thickest armor we've seen so far. Definitely going to have to up things on that. Lots of uh, research breakthrough. Heavy secondary battery. And enable secondary guns heavier than seven inches in casemates or single turrets. Our scientists reports they have trouble figuring out the concept of DD up to two, uh, 600 tons. That's not a problem. I'm not too worried about that right now. Uh, but there we have it. Let's go ahead one more turn. Take us into 1901. Uh, crews are now deemed proficient in the new tactics. So our training has taken hold. I feel like I want to continue that training, but I'm going to stop because I know this is not a real long episode, but that's intentional. Being my first episode, I wanted to do just a little bit into the game to leave plenty of time for all of you who I know have some great input coming my way. Uh, to offer that input, use the comment section below. What do you see that I need to do that I'm not doing? What am I doing that I need to stop doing? What is my blind spot? What is something I'm not thinking about that I haven't talked through that I need to be aware of? Uh, help me, guide me, lead me. Let's make this a collaborative effort in this series. Use the comment section below. Please drop a like on this video. I appreciate it so much. Check out the Patreon to see if you might be interested in that. I will send a message to all of you who are already eligible uh, to be naming a ship so that you can go ahead and let me know what that will be. And we will see you again in another day or so with the next episode. Thanks for watching.